So, thank you for coming and welcome. Uh, today's presentation is uh, the story of this camps from Tokyo, where uh, Manrique, a colleague from Vitoria, and, and me, we were discussing with, with Nidia some, some ideas about uh, how can we track women activity in, in open source projects. Um, well, the, the idea is that the, at that point, the women of OpenStack uh, claimed that it was something like 11 or 12 percent of women in coming to the summit or to the foundation. And they received kind of a tweet saying, OK, but how many of them are actually contributing? So we started thinking about all of this. And then we said, OK, maybe we can try to have a look at this. Um, well, we have some numbers. And this is the kind of things that I would like to present today for you. So this is more or less the outline of today, some well introduction about the story and some context that I found around about big companies like Google, about some gender analysis they have internally. So some first steps in the, in the sense of the architecture, of everything, just in case you would like to understand how this is done and you would like maybe to apply this to any other project. Then some numbers, some method. If I have some good internet connection, I would like to play a bit with some dashboard that I prepared. And then, well, some, some conclusions. So a bit about me, uh, just to say I'm not involved in the Women of OpenStack group yet. Uh, this is kind of my own analysis and interest. Um, well, I'm working in Viteria. We are a startup. We started in 2012, around July. And we are, we are basically providing open source metrics, right? About performance, community, activity, these kind of things. I'm involved in the OpenStack Activity Board. So you can go to activity.openstack.org, and then you will see this kind of dashboards we are producing. I'm also involved in the quarterly report, which is uh, that we're some work together with Stefano Mafuli when he was community manager in the foundation. Uh, well, why this study? You more or less know the context of, of this. And basically, the question that we had is, how uh, open source contributions by women are evolving in time in the, in the OpenStack Foundation. And from my personal point of view, this is probably all about transparency. So we are, we are all working under the same umbrella. We, there are several, a lot of uh, organizations and companies with commercial interests, right? But uh, we, we are all in the same boat and we all have the same mission. So having this transparent layer with all of this info, all of this development, it's, I would say it's good for us and good for all. Uh, so what we have so far, uh, some OpenStack related resources. Uh, there's a LinkedIn, uh, Women of OpenStack, which has around 600 members. By the way, I applied, but I, I'm still not in, I know. <laughs> yeah, maybe. So there are around 140 discussions. There's also a mailing list for related to Women of OpenStack with around 400 emails and threads around 100 participants. There's also an interesting wiki with some resources there. I will talk about, about them later. Some extra stuff. Uh, there's a survey that was done in 2013 from the uh, research group Libresoft, um, where 11% of the people that answered were women. So we have some initial numbers. And then I was having a look around. And then from the World Economic Forum, I saw that something like a 5% of the CEOs in IT companies are women. We have something like a 21%, 21% for mid-level roles and 32% for uh, junior roles. Mm -hmm. uh, some companies, I was again looking around. Then Pinterest, uh, the gender analysis shows that for the tech specific groups they have for the workforce, it's around 19%. So we are talking about 20%. Uh, in the case of Google, for the tech focus, they are around an 18%, right? So pretty close. Uh, we also have some numbers for Facebook. They say that they have 32% uh, for uh, women as a workforce in the whole company. And we are talking about a 16% when in the workforce for uh, the tech group, the engineering. Uh, some others, Dropbox, I don't have the numbers for the tech side, but they claim that they have around 34% in the whole company. Mm -hmm. uh, the slides, by the way, they were at the very beginning, they are speakerdeck.com slash Viteria, just in case you want to follow them. So there are some links and all of this. So summary, 
uh, well, these numbers are not representative of the whole industry, but well, we are talking about a 30-40% of the workforce in these companies and something between 10 and 20% for the tech teams. So what's going on in OpenStack? That's the next question. Mm -hmm. So first steps, uh, what's a technical contribution, which is part of the title of this talk? We are talking about commits, we are talking about uploads, and we are talking about query quotes. Why, do, why did I choose this? Well, first, commit is the basic piece of information that any developer is producing in the community, right? Um, and this commit needs to be previously uploaded, which is maybe another technical contribution. You may have several iterations, and then you have from other people that are reviewing you, saying, well, maybe you have to improve this, maybe you don't have to improve this. So this uh, initial analysis is based on these three, let's say, uh, basic concepts, commits, uploads, and, and reviews. But we may go for any other kind of metrics, something like diversity by company, uh, fairness in the code review process, if we compare females with the rest of the people around, uh, maybe code review between the different organizations. Uh, definitely, we are talking again about transparency. So if there are some not that good points around the project, we may improve them. Mm -hmm. But we need the data in the end. In any case, this is quite sensitive information. So, well, we should deal with this. So, uh, when I started with this, I, I was checking the internet again, which is a great place, by the way. Um, then I found that there's an API named genderize.io, which is to give them a name, and then they uh, return something like, okay, you gave me this name, and then I give you this probability of being male or female, which is, oh, that seems to work. And then I said, okay, let's go for it. So we are talking about 10,000 different identities that I found in Git and Garrett. We'll go for this later. And then those needed on top of this some manual analysis, okay? I also focused on main developers. We will see some percentages, but I don't have the 100% of the population, right? The architecture of this, we are talking about the, uh, we are parsing Git and Garrett repositories. We have some mining tools coming for the metrics in our tool set. I'm developer there, so yeah, I know them. CVS analysis for tracking Git repositories, BitChoice for uh, Garrett, and Sorting Hat is to managing uh, identities. Then there's some process for enriching information, like adding the gender, adding the uh, company, etc. And then some visualization, which is in this case based in Elasticsearch and Kibana. Mm -hmm. Some numbers that we have here. Uh, this analysis was based in the YAML file provided by the foundation, which is something like 450 repositories. Uh, we are talking about 400,000 commits, which are a bit less if we remove bots and merges and all of this. We're talking about quarter million chain sets, close to one million patch set uploads, and more than one million patch set reviews, right? Just give you, to give you some, some context here. The mining tools, uh, as I mentioned, CVS analysis focused on Git, Bicho is focused on Garrett, so we provide, we build some MySQL databases, and then we start messaging this, okay? Then, uh, CVS analysis and Bicho databases are available in this activity board that I mentioned at the beginning. So if you have some time and you would like to play with the data, you can go there. Sorting hat, as this, ha this has some uh, organizations information and this gender and everything, it's a bit more sensitive, so you should ask for them. Okay, um, well, now we are now migrating to some new platform. Its name is Grimoire Lab, more uh, schema-less focused and elastic search and so on. So uh, we have my SQL databases, then I need to aggregate the information. Okay, let's go. So I use pandas, I have everything there. We are talking about something like three million events, uh, one million and a half from each developer touching each file, which are kind of a lot of them. And the same for the reviews. We are talking about another one million and a half. Then I started to play with the data and with a lot of coffee and some manual work, I had some numbers. Mm -hmm. And well, uh, Elasticsearch and Kibana, they are kind of a good team together, so yeah, you should try them if you have not tried them. It's really good. Uh, okay, some validation as I mentioned. I wanted to be sure that uh, at least the people listed in the Women of OpenStack Wiki were right, so at least they are right. Then I went for the main projects and the main companies, and then I was looking for the top developers so we can take something like um, most of the work. Just some numbers, something like 80% of the work is done by a 20% of the community, so in terms of number of things. So that means that we are covering kind of a big amount. I had some really 
hard process checking Asian names. Uh, I'm really bad at this, so any help or any clue is really appreciated. And well, some numbers. So I will show now some demo if internet allows me to have it. Okay. This is the dashboard. Okay, we have on the top left some big numbers. This is for the last five years, as we can see on the top right here. Okay, last five years. We have something like 200, more than 200,000 commits, 5,000 developers, 44, 45 project teams. In terms, in terms of the last five years, we are talking that males, it's something like 86% uh, of the total population of OpenStack, right? While, uh, sorry, they develop an 86% of the total activity in OpenStack measured in commits. Mm -hmm. And in the case of uh, women, they develop something like a 7.16% of this. There's some unknown activity there, which is around a 6%, a bit less than a 7%. This is a bit different from the population. So if we go to the population of uh, men, we are talking about a 65% of them. So that means that 65% of the male developers are doing something like 86% uh, of the total activity, right? And around 11% uh, of the population of women are committing something like a 7% of the activity, right? Then uh, the top projects, in this case, we have this uh, chart here, this table, which is, okay, in general, we have infrastructure, neutral, Nova, documentation, quality assurance, okay? We have, this is the top 10 uh, projects. And we also have the type of contribution here, at the bottom, which is, just have a look at this big purple thing, which is the code, okay? Python, Shell, whatever. So we are talking that something like a 52% of the activity in OpenStack is related to code. Let's go for the pure numbers for female, which is clicking here on some time. Okay. It's interesting to see a couple of things. So if we go for women, uh, the top projects are a bit different. We went for infrastructure, Nova, Etc. The first one now is documentation. So we have documentation, infrastructure, Neutron, and Horizon. Uh, it's interesting to see this chart here, the bar chart, because this is providing kind of a jump in the case of activity for women, right? There's a difference between 2015, 2014, which is around um, 300 commits per month, while here we are talking about 600, 400, 400, 900, so there's a lot, right? In this case, we had something like a 55% in mean of the activity in OpenStack is code. In the case of women, we are talking about a bit less, 43%, right? Um, we can also compare something like, let's go for the last specifically year of activity, right? We have uh, similar numbers of code activity. And we are talking that we had something like a 338 developers, female developers that were active in the community, right? They participated in close to 6,000 commits and they participated also in around 40 project teams. I also have information about the people here, but well, they were anonymized. I didn't feel in the mood of providing such information like this developer is, has this gender. So it's quite sensitive information, right? If we go for for male, which is, we, I click here and then I click here. As I mentioned, the code activity is a bit higher, which is something like a 55% of activity. Uh, and it's a bit different. We are talking about infrastructure in first place, Neutron, then documentation, and Civil Nova. Okay, so we have this. Okay, uh, oh, sorry. I also prepared so this dashboard here is focused on Git activity and Git population, right? I also prepared another one for Garrett activity, which is again for the last five years. Uh, okay, main numbers. We have the big numbers like we mentioned before, close to 1 million reviews, uh, something like 200,000 chain sets, more than 4,000 developers, and around 45 project teams. This chart on the top right is showing evolution in terms of this activity. This is code review, specifically code review activity, right? 
and we are talking about that in the OpenStack project, maybe in March, in the 1st of March of 2014, they had something like 28 different, uh, 28,000 different code reviews. Plus one, minus one, plus two, minus two, right? Okay, we have this chart there. And then let's focus on this pie chart. I don't like pie charts, but uh, let's go for the pie chart. Okay, uh, the, the one in the, in the center is providing information about the code reviews. So we have plus two, which is this one, which has 400,000. Then we have plus one, which is close to 300,000. There's something like 200,000 minus one, and then minus two around uh, 10,000. So OpenStack community seems to be really polite. You don't really like to have minus one and minus two, right? In any case, let's focus on, uh, well, on the, the, the circle on the outside is providing the gender. So we are talking that, uh, 42% of the plus, oh, sorry, 89% uh, of the plus two were done by men. Mm -hmm. While this activity in case of female is around 8%. Uh, mm -hmm. Then we have, again, uh, an unknown activity here. But anyway, in the case of uh, maybe plus one, we have a bit different numbers. So instead of having an 89 by male, we have something like a 76. And in the case of the oh, female, we have something like a 10, 11%. Mm -hmm. But these are code reviews. What's going on with the core reviewers, which are those that can do minus two and plus two? Please remember this chart on the top right, okay? There are some, something like close to 30,000 code reviews. Let's go for, for the plus two, which is running, okay. <clears throat> there are still some similar numbers. We are close to 15,000. You can see that female is kind of increasing, right? It's a bit bigger than in previous charts. And it's quite interesting if we click in female that we have a big jump. We have even doubling here. We are talking about 1,000 something and we are talking close to 2,000 here. So that means that during the last year, the women activity, at least the core review, women activity has increased a lot and has increased really much, okay? Uh, some other numbers that I can show you, well, in terms of activity is pretty similar to the previous numbers that we had, okay? Um, this is related to, okay, code review. And then I wanted to show you something about the demographics of OpenStack. Okay, uh, this pie chart is again displaying this idea of the population by gender. Okay, so we have male, we have female, uh, unknown, and we have female, right? This chart, the top bar chart, is providing information about the, per quarter, the number of new developers that the OpenStack community had. Great, so we had something like in the uh, second quarter of 2013, they had something like 300 developers, awesome. If we go to the bottom chart, which is this one, uh, this is again providing information per quarter, but this is aggregating information uh, when, when a developer did the last commit, okay? So we can say things like, during the last quarter, the OpenStack uh, community had something like 1,500 developers active. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the interesting point about this is, we click here, we know on the top when the developers were born, so when they are coming. We have some activity at the very, very beginning that are still there. We have something like nine developers that entered in May in 2010. We have some developers that enter in May 2013. Uh, well, the big bunch of developers are coming, came during the last quarter. This is quite usual. So we have in OpenStack and other open source communities kind of a long tail of really small contributions, one, two commits. So this is quite usual. Most of the people came a commit, that's all. Mm -hmm. But if we are interested in all of this, as we have the table of top developers, we can go for clicking here and saying, okay, given this list of developers, again, it's anonymized, we can know when they, they, they came. Okay, let me remove this. Let me remove this. Because the interesting case here is again, and hopefully this is useful for the Women of OpenStack working group, uh, 
this is the attraction of new female developers to the community. By the way, there are some jumps that are of interest, maybe like May 2013, February 2014, August 2014, August 2015. They seem to be related in somehow to the summits, but I'm not pretty sure. But they seem to be. This is also a similar trend in, in the general OpenStack, so this is not something really special for female, right? And the point here is, okay, let's go for this May 2013. We have these people, these developers, female developers, that uh, when they did the last commit. So we know that from these 34 here, eight of them left the community right that quarter. But we have something like 10 of them are still contributing to the community. Mm -hmm. The point here is, if uh, in the wiki of OpenStack and uh, the women of OpenStack, there, there's a list of 20 or 40 developers there. But we are talking here about a population of 500. So if there are people that are living and they have the knowledge about how to contribute to OpenStack, maybe you can send an email saying, hey, we miss you, how are you? We would love if you come around. Okay. Um, okay, so this is more or less the kind of tooling I wanted to present to you, right? Uh, let me go back to the slides. So in the slides are all of these numbers. So don't worry about this. Let's go for the analysis. Uh, this is some extra bonus for this presentation as I have, yeah, I still have time. Uh, the idea is uh, outreach is helpful for a lot of things, but it's specifically outreach helping the gender gap in OpenStack. So, uh, whoop, yeah. Well, the idea of outreach is this is from the website. Outreach helps people from groups underrepresented in free and open source software get involved. Great. Uh, how's performing the community retaining those developers? So, there's a developer that came to the community. How good is OpenStack retaining those? So I prepared some small analysis about the uh, starting in 2013. So we have four of them. And then, well, if we say that developers are active during the last year, 2015 outreach programs are not that interesting. Um, well, we can compare this outreach retention with the general retention of the community. So let's go for some numbers again. Uh, this left chart is the developers that were attracted in blue and that are still contributing in orange. So if we go for the first year, as far as I know, that, uh, start, that OpenStack started in this, they attracted one developers for the outreach program. Uh, it's not contributing anymore. Okay? If we go for the second, it's in 2014, February. Uh, four developers were attracted by the community. One still contributing. So at 25% of retention. Um, then we have two developers in August 2014. No developer is still contributing. And we have something like six developers that were attracted in 2015 in the outreach. And it's one developer that is still contributing. Let's go for the top right chart here. So this is for those months that I had a look at the outreach. I went for those and I look for the women specifically that were entered in that moment and are still or not uh, contributing to the project. So in blue again, the attracted developers in orange ones that are still contributing. So we have that in the first uh, period, around 15 of them entered as newcomers to the community and we have five of them still contributing. Around similar number in uh, 2014 in February, around 16. And I think in this case, it's one or two developers. Then uh, there's a high increase in 2014 in August, something like 22. And we have something like close to uh, around nine developers that are still contributing. And for the last period, um, we have something like 20 developers that were attracted and four of them are still contributing. So it seems that the number shows that uh, there's a better retention. So it's something like if we ignore outreach for this purpose and we go for this, we, I mean, if we compare both, it seems that having a new women coming in the companies is a bit better than having women coming for the outreach in terms of retention. I only want to clarify that. This is the, the comparison of the retention rate. The blue chart uh, is showing retention rate for uh, the general OpenStack community for women. And then the orange one is the retention rate for the outreach program. So in the first period, we have something like 
a retention rate for women coming from any place in August, something like a 30 something percent, and we have zero in the case of the origin. Uh, if we go for 2014, we have some, something like, interesting, by the way, 5% in the case of the companies and the general organization, and uh, we have a 25% of the average team. In the case of August 2014, we are talking about a 40%, but again, zero in average. And then finally, uh, we have a 20%, approximately, the retention rate for 2015 in January, and the average is quite similar in this case. So, some conclusions that I may have from this analysis, small analysis. Uh, more women are attracted and retained also in relative numbers thanks to uh, companies in OpenStack. So we have something like a big company coming and they are bringing something like a, a stake claim between 10, 20%. They are doing better than the organization that the outreach programs as they are in this specific focus problem like uh, decreasing the gender gap, right? Um, so, even though I have, I would like to say that we have big companies claiming that they are around a 10% and a 20% and they are mostly between a, close to a 19%, but hey, we are having an 11% in OpenStack, so there's still room for improvement. So what's going on here? I don't know. So, and then a couple of questions that I would like to, 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 to tell is something like, okay, is it worth exploring other kind of uh, investment? So we have Aldrichi, which are great. Can we go to companies and say, hey, you are, let's say, we, we are kindly f pushing you to have a more diverse teaching group here. We would love to have it and we would love to hear that from, from you. Uh, because we have the numbers indeed and we can show them to them. And maybe as uh, Google Summer of Code and Outreachy are focused on uh, degree programs, maybe what about going to high school? I don't know about the USA or other countries. I'm from Spain, so I know what's going on there, but not here. So those are some ideas that they have. So, some conclusions. First, decisions are based on data. So we may have the perception that something is going well, but then data tell you, no, that's not true. Or the other way around. So, but the point, the point is that we need data, right? So probably at least with this kind of dashboard tooling and all of this could be useful in somehow, I would say. Some answers. Uh, so there's a continuous increase in the attraction of women to OpenStack and it's growing. We are talking about 11% during the last year. Uh, if compared to the last numbers of the summit, I think they said that uh, it was a 13% of attendees. So they are close. It's, uh, there's a great increase in the core uh, reviews. Women doing plus two and minus two, which is great. Um, I would say that most of the women are coming as new organizations join the foundation. So this is probably a good path to, to explore maybe. And well, I would say that probably having some tooling is uh, good to have some numbers and to have some comparison and finally to make decisions, right? Uh, as I mentioned, we are having something like a 25% of the population as a known gender, but they are only doing uh, less than a 7% of activity. So there's room for improvement of the data set. I also found some false positive, but well, that was done in my time, so I have two hands only. Uh, but at least this provides some numbers about the initial status of, of, of all of this, right? Hopefully it's useful for the women of OpenStack Working Group and, and the project in general, I guess. Uh, some open paths. Uh, well, uh, we are talking, if we, if you remember at the, very, at the very beginning, I mentioned that we had something like, um, a percentage of probability given a name. Uh, we are talking about 550 female developers for any kind of probability, well, more than 50%. Uh, but if we go for a 100%, we are having those numbers by a 200. If we play with the dashboard as I did before, for that probability, we have similar activity. So similar activity and population. So numbers are pretty similar in that case. So as we have the numbers and emails and everything, well, we can talk to any of them and part let them that we are here and that it's open to participate on and everything. So maybe as we, as a new developer come to Garrett and the system say hello, maybe, it's, uh, if maybe there's a way to say hello if there's a woman coming to the community, I don't know. Or maybe any other diverse group. So further, further work. Uh, as I mentioned, this is sensitive info. Well, 
at least from my point of view. I don't know yours. So the dashboard is still private. We, we may go for something public. Uh, based on this, uh, and this is kind of a work of Viteria, we are providing any, any kind of analysis. So we can go for some uh, the time to merge fairness. So if the code review is fair between men and women, or even between companies, or things like this. Uh, we can go for percentages of how, what are the most diverse project teams or the most diverse companies in OpenStack. So this may help to say, hey, they are the great, they are doing great, so maybe the others can have a look at this. Uh, quarterly reports or maybe uh, analysis like uh, we define some policy, we have data previously, we have data after this. We can compare the data and check if the return of, of investment of all of this is really working or not. So uh, whoop, hopefully this is useful to have a better picture of women of open stack activity. Um, well, as to say, we are looking for a sponsor for this. It's quite heavy time consuming. So uh, thank you very much. I don't know if we have any question. Thank you. Oh, please, if someone, uh, I think you should stand up and go to the microphone. I'm short, though. Um, is there a specific call to action to help you get more uh, data corrected for the name identification? Asian names are really hard for this. Yeah, I know that. That's why I'm asking. Is there anything specific we could patch, do, help with? Uh, well, either uh, you can go for each of the companies asking for that specific data, so they can have they can provide more accurate data sets. So is it a call out to the individuals to identify? Perhaps? That would be great as they identify the country and things like. Oh, Can I give another suggestion? oh please go ahead. He might, he might, know, might not know. Uh, he might. You may not know, but um, the, one of the suggestions would be to integrate OpenStack ID with um, Garrett, mm -hmm. so that Garrett all of a sudden uses the same ID that is provided when you log in as a foundation member. And there, you specify your gender, you however, like. you may if you like. So by the foundation, I think that uh, there is 40% coverage in there uh, for new members, and it, there could be a push from the foundation. So if, you, if, we, if we end up using the same database, we can collect that information more, much more precisely. Okay. Yeah, that would, that would really helpful. Thank you. Thank Probably you. we need then something like from the foundation, uh, something. Daniel, this is absolutely fantastic because it, it was just a casual conversation that we had yeah. <laughs> in Tokyo and I did not realize how much work you guys have put in and, you know, data speaks louder than words mm. and so it's really good to, and in fact, in the breakfast meeting at the Women of OpenStack, some of us were saying we want to see metrics because that's the true measure of progress, right? Mm -hmm. um, whether actual numbers are changing, especially coding numbers and Garrett numbers and things like that. So this is great. And we'd like to kind of see how we can take this further. So I'll great. follow up with you mm -hmm. uh, on behalf Perfect. of that. And I also want to give a shout out to Lana and to um, and Gentle. And the reason the documentation project is doing so extremely well is they have very inclusive leaders, such as yeah. Anne and Lana uh, at, as PTLs, right? who are making sure that everybody is contributing and bringing new people on board. But you brought up another interesting problem, which is retention. How do you keep people once they come mm. on board and continue to keep them engaged and contributing? Okay. So, excellent work. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, more questions? Uh, so one, one thing, the, the graph that I the most want to see, and maybe it went by and I didn't see it, uh, I see change in total participation of women, but not relative participation. And given that the projects grow and shrink rapidly, um, it, would have been, it would be very interesting to see, clearly there are more and more women participating, but it's not clear whether there are proportionately more and more women mm -hmm. participating. Mm -hmm. Does that uh, make sense? Yeah. yeah, well, I don't have the, the numbers right here. But right, yeah, I, I understand you don't. But it, it's doable. I mean, yeah. And, and the other thing that, that about your presentation, which was great, and that has my head head spinning. So in, I'm with uh, peripherally involved with Wikipedia, and we okay. people there spend a lot of time trying to correlate these little uh, micro interactions that people have that are largely tracked in Wikipedia, right? Like like uh, edit revisions, for instance. Mm -hmm. And 
how these positive or negative interactions discourage and cause people to drop out of the project. Mm -hmm. And of course, Garrett is a, a perfect petri dish of measurable interactions, right? I mean, a, presumably a negative one isn't necessarily a negative interaction, but it would be, I feel like there are great depths to plumb there in terms mm -hmm. of what process results in developers being discouraged or encouraged or welcomed when they arrive and so forth. Yeah, well, first said that uh, we, as in the activity board, we are aggregating information from much more bunch of data sources like IRC channels, mailing list, and all of this. So uh, we, we don't really have to focus on Garrett or Git because there are a lot of interactions around. And probably some, some social network analysis would be great because probably if, if documentation people are doing a great job there, it's because they are good at some social stuff for sure. This is people, this is all about people in the end. So probably kind of measuring things would be great, I guess. Thank you for the great presentation. Thank you. It was really good. Uh, one of the things in your recommendations or suggestions which I liked about was high school you were talking about. Mm -hmm. I really like that idea of bringing more awareness and also giving opportunity for um, high school students to, I have not seen much high school students getting um, even awareness about OpenStack mm -hmm. or any contribution. And in extending that, even the undergrad, when I was talking to some of the tech talks in the universities, not everybody is aware of OpenStack and how to contribute and everything. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I don't have a, any suggestion, but I'm just saying I'd love to help whatever I can. I'm going to definitely help with that. But if there is another way, uh, we can all have a forum or something so that we can say, hey, go and join this. And this is a quick cheat sheet, or you'll have mentors and everything. Love to have any kind of resources for mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, that's definitely. I I agree with you. So. Just wanted to say uh, thanks for putting together the data. Uh, but I was curious if there are any ideas or plans to. Um, address the people outside of the gender binary, the non-conforming and gender queer. Mm. Um, a lot of those people in the unknowns or maybe some people that have been marked male or female don't actually identify that way. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, well, uh, uh, I tried to have this as a semi-automated way, so that's the, the idea I had about the first names and go with this. Uh, then if we need more qualitative data, which is probably this, we should go probably, uh, as uh, Stefano mentioned, this uh, gender or something else idea about this. Having this automated, if you have any idea about this, <laughs> would be great, but uh, I didn't have a clue so far. So, and, but, and also, we need to sponsor this work. It needs to be uh, purely voluntary that the third gender is on their own. Um, and because the process is compelled, and I, I really applaud that. So I think we need to find a sponsor whether it's in the foundation or through the work of women of open staff or through the diversity task force hmm. point, the big view so we can actually track you know a lot more than just the, the gender binary yep. so more comments or questions no so well, thank you very much for your time yeah, thank you, thank you.